Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Germany once again, and this is yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip down to v Bavaria to visit my good friend Daniel. And this brewery, I think, will be quite interesting. These guys are one of the kind of larger regional breweries from Bavaria, if you like. So for this one, we are going to go to a little place called Mutten, which is in the kind of northwestern part of Bavaria. It's actually closer to uh, Frankfurt by the looks of it than it is to Nuremberg on the other side of the country and it's part of the kind of bad kissing in district or uh, municipality or whatever from what I understand or county I'm not sure exactly what terminology I should use here but for the first time we are going to go to Vilbroi Braugai and we're having a taste of one of the beers from their Maria Ehrenberger range this one is the Pilgestoff uh, Edelhell and it comes in at 5.1% ABV as the name suggests it is a Bavarian style Hellas beer and it is supposed to be quite a nice one this. As I say, um, in Germany one of the great things is that regardless of what brewery you're going to go to, you are going to get a pretty um, good quality beer. But very curious to see how this one turns out. It's one of my favourite traditional German beer styles. If you've watched the channel before, you will know that I love the Helles, the Dunkels and the Doppelbox. And of course my whole love of beer started with the Bamberg Rauch beers. So very curious to see how this one turns out. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Vilbroi. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the play list of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about Vilbroi then on to my brewery notes. So Vilbroi as I mentioned to you can be found in Moton in Bad Kissingen which is in the northwestern part of Bavaria and apparently the 9th century marks the start of brewing in of the brewing history in this area. So the religious lords of the Hoshti Fulda, basically the uh, Fulda Archbishopdom, if you can call it that, they built a brewery and tavern in Dulbachtal and over the time this village of Mutten was gradually built up um, as the economy of the area started to evolve. So in 1791, Georg Will bought the Fürstliches Fuldische Amtsbrauerei Uwirtshaus um, from Prince Bishop Adelbert von Harstahl, and this marked the birth of the Willbroi Company. So after 1900, the Ville beer was being exported to various foreign restaurants. I'm guessing it was going to places like what is now the Czech Republic and to France and maybe into the Netherlands and stuff like this. Um, but there was increased popularity for this beer, basically. But during the First World War, the positive growth of the brewery that had been continuous for quite a period of time stopped, basically, because of the lack of raw materials and the fact that the brewery apparatus and stuff had been dismantled. A lot of it, This happened to a lot of breweries and during the First World War. Basically, their brewing equipment was taken away and used for met the metals were used for tanks and armour and all of this kind of things. But following seven years of inactivity, the widow Theresia Ville and her son Carl began brewing again in 1926 and they slowly began to rebuild the business. Soon after though the Second World War broke out and this provided a further setback for the brewery, Carl was actually a prisoner of war and wasn't able to return to Germany until 1948 and the brewery began to grow through the 1950s and 1960s with the building of a new and more kind of modern facility. But apparently up until the 1960s they used to fill their beer in 100 or they used to put their beer in 100 liter wooden barrels before they introduced bottling of course nowadays that's unheard of most of the barrels are around 30 liters but by 1966 which was the brewery's 175th anniversary this brewery had become the third largest private brewery in Bavaria and it had 210 employees which is pretty impressive throughout the 1980s though several more investments were made in the modernization of the brew house and Helmutville who was the son of Carl well, he died in 1987 and the brewery was taken over by the neighbouring family family brewery in Fulda which was the Hochstief Boy. and the union of these two breweries was then extended again in 1997 with the addition of the Rydelsche uh, Burgbrauerei Lauterbach if I'm pronouncing that correctly some of these German pronunciations are a little bit difficult and the regional company of these three breweries has been doing very well ever since but today they produce the classic Wilbeers they've got a series of Weizens as well they've got a Dunkelweizen, a Natter 
Sinatra Weizen. I think they've got a Cristal Weizen actually as well. They've got a few different beers in this Weizen range and they've also got various... Um, They've got a shandy in there, uh, and they've also got a few kind of other things as well, which is interesting. They've got some fruit and beer mixes too, um, but they've also got this beer, this beer series as well, which is called the basically the Pilgrim series, so the Maria uh, Erlenberger Pilgestoff uh, series. So there's a Pilsner beer in this one, uh, and they've also got this one at the Edelhell. And this these beers are named after the basically for the brewery's proximity to the famous Maria Erlenberg pilgrimage site in the Rhone, and the Rhone area is in the northwest of Bavaria as I mentioned to you and it seems to be you know um, there's a lot of, just to say about Germany generally there is still quite a lot of Christian influence in Germany um, compared to, to compared to quite a few to the, the more northern European countries I guess most of Germany is either Catholic or Protestant I forget it's one thirds or one and two thirds or the other um, I'm not sure I think it's maybe one third Catholic two thirds Protestant or the other way around actually but um, there's still a significant Christian influence in Germany, and quite a lot of the breweries, of course, have this influence in their, uh, you know, their names of their beers and things like this. A lot of breweries have connections to monks or to monasteries or uh, or whatever, as this one does, as we've talked about. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about this brewery just now. One of the larger uh, regional breweries that you're going to find in Bavaria, and this was a beer that I picked up when I was in um, when I was in Bamberg visiting Daniel. So yeah, um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about the brewery, about the brewery, then you. You can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and stuff like this. They've got a lot more technical detail about their brew house and things like that that you can read if you are a kind of beer nerd in that sense of the of the word. And um, but for me, it's all about tasting the beer and things like that. I do enjoy a little bit of home brewing, but some of the stuff that they were talking about in there was beyond my knowledge of uh, of the chemical engineering side of things. Even though I've got a background in chemistry, but yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as I said at the start, this beer is a 5.1% Bavarian Hellas beer and um, you know it's very nicely presented. I do like these kind of traditional um, German style labels there. This one you can see has uh, the old kind of monastery there. I'm guessing this is the Maria Ehrenberger, um, the pilgrimage site for the Christians but really nicely presented label this one um, and you can see they've also got this symbol on it there and that is on the bottle cap as well and um, yeah nicely presented beer this one. It also has a little thing about the um, the ruin area in the northern part of Bavaria, which is kind of cool, but yeah, really nicely presented this one. So I guess without further ado, we can um, get it out on the we can get it out and into the glass. I'm really curious to see how this one um, turns out. Actually, it just says um, on the back here it says. Uh, a, a special hell with golden things. It's mild uh, malt aroma uh, and taste. Uh, it's basically, yeah, it basically just saying on the back some of these words. It's quite difficult to read, um, but they've got this typical. But this, it's basically saying that this beer style thing is a typical um, Bavarian art, if you like, and it's not for. Uh, it is essential for your pilgrimage, I think it's saying. So, um, yeah, nicely presented beer, this one. Um, and we'll get it out and into the glass and just see how we go on. I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. Nice little bit of smoke on the opening, and we'll get it out and into the glass. Normally, of course, I will say that about this beer. Germans can get a little bit sensitive about the glassware that you use for beers. I like to use this kind of tulip glass because it's a good all-rounder for all the different beer styles but normally you would drink this glass, th this beer, in either a, a kind of stein or you would drink it in one of these kind of tall, uh, thin German glasses. But I quite like to do my beer reviews in these because it helps the aroma come out a little bit more. But we can get rid of the brewery notes now and we can focus on the actual tasting of this beer. So as you can see with this one, and as you would kind of expect from a Hellas beer, this one has poured a lovely bright golden -y yellow colour. This one, you know, this is typically what you would expect from a Hellas beer. They can pour kind of hazy, they can pour uh, a little bit more kind of clear like this, but there's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say, perfect white head on this one. It's not even um, particularly creamy, to be honest with you. It is definitely a perfect white head. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and you can see there is a good little bit of activity in there from the um, from the carbonation so a very very nice looking beer not nothing particularly surprising about this one when you consider that it is a hellas beer if I put my fingers behind the glass you can see there is a good degree of transparency to this beer so let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one yeah so the thing I'm noticing about this first off is it actually leans quite a little bit towards the malty side of things there's a nice sort of bready 
base to this one. Um, it's got a nice sort of white bready quality to it. There's a little bit of a, there is a good touch of biscuity sweetness in there. Um, it reminds me a little bit of these McVitie's digestive biscuits. I'm not sure how good a descriptor that is for uh, for Germans, right? enough. I don't remember seeing McVitie's digestives when I was over in Germany. Um, but it really, the aroma of this one really does remind me of that. You've almost got a little touch of a caramelly note to this one as well because the sweetness is that prominent in there. But a good little touch of grainy note, a little bit of a biscuity sweetness. And you've also got that nice, smooth, white bready, malty character in this beer as well. Um, on the hoppy side of things, yeah, on the hoppy side of things, you've got that typical German noble hop aroma. You've got a little touch of earthiness in there. You've got some nice floral and grassy um, aromaticity as well, which is good. Yeah, you've got a nice little bit of a floral aromatic quality to this beer. Nice little touch of a kind of light grassiness there as well. It's, you know, I love these German Noble Hops. It's so nostalgic for me. I used to, I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times on the channel, but I used to live in Heidelberg in Germany. I was studying there and um, I always used to love these kind of traditional um, German style beers, particularly the Helles was always good, but I love the Dunkels and the Doppelbox as well. The Helles, if I wanted something more hoppy, I would always go for the Helles and the Dunkel, of course, was a little bit more malty. But I love the, you know, the Tettnanger and the Hallertau hop aromas. They're so distinctive, that nice little almost sweet earthiness, the floral aromatic components and also a little bit of the lighter grassiness. There is a little touch of that almost grassy, citrusy quality to this beer as well, which is really nice. And um, Maybe there's a little touch of a kind of peary ester or something like that coming out of this beer. But it is very kind of straight up, you know, this is, it smells like a typical German sort of Helles uh, beer, this one. So if you know this style and you like it, the aroma is kind of pretty much what you would what you would expect out of this one. But to me, on the on, in terms of the Helles spectrum, it leans a little bit more towards the sweeter, malty side of things. But there is a good little bit of hoppy presence in there as well. But let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we get on with this beer. So this one is the Maria Ergenberger Pilgestoff Edelhell from Villebloy in Moulton in bad kissing in, in uh, Bavaria in Germany. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skull, Prost. Yeah. That is a pretty nice beer, I have to say. Again, it's one of the things with these beers. It's an, it, you can go to all of these different, or most of these different German breweries, and you know that you're going to get a good quality beer. Um, you know the these ger the, one of the things that's always impressed me about the German beer industry, if you like, is that regardless of what scale they brew on, they always seem to be able to give you stuff that's that's pretty good quality actually. And again, this is one that kind of. Uh, that really shows that. I've had quite a few beers from different regional breweries in Germany. I think my, I must have reviewed about 300 German beers on the channel or, or something at the moment. But again, this is just another very, very solid beer. So, where to start with this one? Um, the malt base then. If you go into the very centre of your palate, again, the middle of your palate is just blanketed with this nice, smooth, white bready quality. That, as I say, just goes right across the middle of your tongue. And um, as you go further into the flavour, I think the malt base starts to sweeten up a little bit. Um, it's actually quite crisp in the malt base, this one. This beer, I suspected it from the malt base a little bit. It does lean a little bit more almost towards the kind of laggery um, side of things, which is kind of interesting. Usually you would expect a Hellas to be just a little bit thicker than this, from what I remember. This beer does seem to have some Pilsner um, kind of leanings to it, or lager type leanings to it, which is kind of interesting, I guess. The Hell you know, the Hellas beer is a lager, if you like. Um, the Dunkel is a lager, the Doppelbock is a lager type beer as well. But this one, to me, um, if I have a, a sort of Hellas lager, I do, you know, sometimes you can expect these just to be a little bit thicker than that. The malt base in this one, I think, is very, very crisp. But it works for it. It really does work for it quite nicely. And, you know, it's one of these interpretations of the style. Some of them can be very crisp. Some of them can be a little bit more malty. Some of them can be a little bit more hoppy as well. But the main question is whether it's a nice beer or not. And to me, this is certainly a very nice kind of uh, easy drinking one. And, you know, I like the Hellas style. It is intended to be a nice kind of easy drinking beer. But, yeah. 
the thing is when you take a bigger gulp of it as well it does have that nice refreshing quality to it that turns into a smoothness afterwards if you take a big gulp of this beer you're going to find that it is a nice kind of it really is just a nice smooth um easy drinker as i've mentioned but yeah nice kind of um pale malty bready malt base and then you can pick out some of the smoothness of the malt in here i do wonder if they've maybe used a little bit of iron in here uh, the iron malts from bamberg would be very curious to know that right enough but yeah middle of your palate's got that nice smooth white bready quality on top of that, if you just go more towards the middle of your palate, you can feel there is a little bit of graininess just pushing its way out of this beer. In the very centre of the tongue, you've got a nice light sort of um, biscuity note to this beer as well. And it does evolve to be a little bit more almost caramelly, and that will be covering the alcohol actually. Um, if memory serves me correctly, some of these Hellas beers can be around 4.5 and upwards. 5.1 if I, again, if I'm remembering correctly, is a little touch high for um, for a Hellas beer. So this is one of the heavier ones in terms of its alcohol content, I think, if we're talking about German traditional beer. Do let me know if there, if uh, that is a correct statement or not in the in the comments section below, because there are a lot of people in Germany, they're very into their regional beer, so do let me know about that, actually. Um, but with this one, I think this is a little touch higher than some of the other um, Hellas beers that I've had, and I think that's maybe why this beer is slightly sweeter, because it's always the more sweet uh, qualities of the malt base that are covering the alcohol a little bit. So, But the malt base is very simple, a little bit bready, a little bit grainy, some biscuity notes in there, and a little teeny, teeny touch of caramel. It really reminds me of McVitie's Digestives, the malt base in this one, and it's got a good element of crispness to it. I think there is a, a touch of Pilsner malt. Uh, there, ha there is, there has been a bit of touch of Pilsner malt used in this one, just to give the malt base a little bit of a crisp quality. Yeah. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things, then back corners of the palate, you've got a nice uh, little bit of an earthiness in there. That's that slightly sweet earthiness that you always get. Um, from the the traditional German noble hops, the Tittnanger and the Hallertaus, you can pick up that in there. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you can feel that earthiness just creeps forward a little bit. Then you get a good little touch of floral aromaticity towards the front corners of the palate and round the very front curve of the tongue. The beer just gets a little touch lighter and more grassy. And then behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And for me with this one, it's that typical sort of a grassy, very, almost very slightly lemony um, ester that you get out of this one. But there's almost a kind of pear-y, um, it's not apple I think it's a very slightly pear-y um, ester coming out of this one. So this beer really, um, it's one of these ones, I think, that um, doesn't do anything particularly surprising with the Hellas style, but it's just really... Um, really just it's just very nicely done and you can't really ask for much more than that these regional breweries of course are what the the general kind of purpose of these bigger regional breweries in germany is to put beers out there that are drinkable and kind of fit the styles and to me that's exactly what they've done here so you can't really fault them for that at all i mean is it you know kind of creative in the same way that um you'll get from some of the smaller breweries maybe not but it's still a nice, easy drinking beer that's uh, you know fairly widely available throughout Bavaria. I mean, I got this one when I think of on the map where this beer was from, from uh, Mutten, which is right on the northwestern part of Bavaria. I bought this beer when I was in Bamberg. You know, and that kind of shows you the the sort of scope that this beer is available. And quite often with different breweries in Germany, you can't get beers outside of the next couple of towns around them. It's very difficult in some places. Um, you know, it's difficult to get beer in Kiel that you would get in uh, in Munich, for example, sometimes, unless it's one of the bigger breweries, right enough. Um, so that's just the thing to bear in mind with Germany. It's one of the, the cool things about Germany, but it's also a little bit of a curse if you're a beer reviewer like me. There's beers that are very, very highly regarded, but you're just never, ever going to come across them. And, uh, in certain circumstances and this is one of these regional breweries I think that are just putting some nice kind of easy drinking beers on the market and in terms of a, a Hellas beer to me this one fits the bill it's a little bit crisper and slightly sweeter than some of the other ones that I've come across before but the main question should be is it a good beer and I personally uh, think it is I wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again and this is as I say though this is a style that I quite enjoy um, but yeah I do like that. Um, so in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say this beer, it's sort of at the bottom end of mid-bodied, top end of light-bodied. 
carbonation is quite smooth. It's leaning a little bit towards the oily side of things. The malt base, as I said, has a bit of smoothness to the base, but the further you go into the aftertaste, I think the sweeter this beer's getting. There's a little touch of hoppy bitterness to this one. I think you're talking maybe 30, uh, you know, sort of 30-ish IBUs with this beer. Yeah, maybe not. I was going to say, I was tempted to say maybe 40, but I think this is around a 30 IBU beer, this one. Um, little touch of kind of fruity ester from this one, a sort of peary, grassy, uh, citrusy sort of ester out of this beer. But overall, it's, it's just a really nice, quite crisp, easy drinking Hellas, this one. This is a beer that you could easily session. I very rarely session beers these days because for me it's all about tasting different things. But um, in terms of being a Hellas beer, I think they've done a pretty um, nice job with this one. So I'm glad I was able to try this. It's cool always to try these beers from the regional breweries in Germany and of course the beers from the Brauhauses as well and there's you know there's so many breweries in Germany it's cool to just try as many different things as you can and this is a style that I've always enjoyed since I lived in Germany so yeah thumbs up to the guys at uh, Vilboy for this one this is an interesting beer and if you get the chance to try this one the Maria um, Ehrenberger Pilgestoff Edelhell if you like this style of beer, I think you're going to find a nice sort of easy drinking example of it here. So let's just leave it at that for this one. This is a nice hellish beer. It leans a little bit towards the sweet side of things. Very, very smooth. And uh, it's it's just a nice, kind of crisp, easy drinker. And that's what you want from this style. So it gets a thumbs up from me. And uh, maybe I'll drink this beer again the next time I go to Germany. So yeah, let's leave it at that then. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Veilboy and do let me know if there are any other Hellas beers that you'd recommend for me. I always like trying different Hellas beers. I've had a good few German recommendations from you guys. Again, I would love to review them, but the problem with the German beers is that they are very local and very regional, so it might take me a while to get a hold of these. But if you do send me a suggestion, I will put it on my untapped list and you'll see it at some point, fingers crossed. Um, but thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below, as I said, and let me know your favourite beers from Vailbroi. Check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon. This one was the Maria Ehrenberger Pilgestoff Edelhell coming in at 5.1% from Vilboy in Molten Bad Kissingen, Bavaria, Germany. Until the next time, it's Landry just now and I'll catch you guys later. Have a go at this beer if you want a nice, easy drinking German Bavarian style Hellas. Slange, skull, prost.